Connor Bamford. He's a research fellow at Wolfson Institute for Experimental Medicine at Queen's University. He joins us live from Belfast. Thank you for joining us on the program. We saw a dramatic increase in the number of confirmed cases of the coronavirus overnight, a 3,500 um, jump um, in cases. What does that tell us about its spread? And is it possible that far more people have it than we actually know? So we know this virus can infect people and it can um, spread between them. So it's quite, it appears to be quite efficiently doing that. So it can spread from each infected person. You can maybe get an additional two infected people. And this seems to be through the respiratory route. And we know that um, you know, there's at least these 20,000 or so confirmed cases, but undoubtedly that uh, the number of real cases is probably higher. And, and this is because, you know, sometimes when public health systems are overwhelmed in an outbreak such as this, it's quite hard to get a firm um, idea of how many infections there are. We saw markets around the world rise on news that scientists in the UK have reportedly made a big breakthrough in the race for a coronavirus vaccine. And Chinese state TV is reporting that a research team at Zhejiang University has found an effective drug to treat people. What do you know about the likelihood of finding a vaccine or a treatment so quickly? Um, so, so at the minute, this is a new virus. We we um, we don't have any available vaccines or drugs against it, at least proven and at least licensed. We know that vaccines and drugs, you know, they are going to be the main thing that's going to stop this outbreak and prevent um, the virus from spreading. And so we would really like that. Um, we've only known about the virus for a month, but we, we do have ideas about how you would make a vaccine and how you would make antiviral drugs. And this is mainly because we've been studying related viruses such as the SARS coronavirus um, over the last 20 years. Um, so we do have good strategies. Um, and as far as the, the papers um, regarding this vaccine have not been published, um, but I believe that the ones regarding the antiviral drugs have been, and they've only been looking at um, in experimental um, conditions within within the, the lab. But of course, you know, to transfer that into the human um, system is gonna take you know, months um, at least. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to guess, um, based on what we've seen as far as the exponential growth um, in the number of confirmed cases of this virus, how much further we can expect to see it spread before it's able to be contained and, and I don't know, perhaps levels off and um, gets, uh, gets contained? And so I'm not an expert in the uh, modeling side of things, but we know that if we didn't do anything, you know, everybody's susceptible to this virus. That if nothing happened, you know, it would eventually you know, infect um, everybody it can. But of course, that isn't the case, and we are doing things. And um, you know, mainly, these are public health measures um, within the affected regions in China, between China and other countries, and within other countries. And you know, there's multiple things at play here, and it's containing the treating the patients within China and across the world, containing it within China, and actually you know stopping it getting to new countries and spreading within that, and at least within the affected countries where cases have come from China, and um, we've been able to find new cases and ultimately contain them. So I think this is a positive sign that we are on, we we are well prepared for these. Okay, we'll leave it there. Conard Bamford joining us from Belfast. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today.